Welcome to our next lecture on condensed matter theory. In this video, I want to discuss the specific heat of metals and show how peculiar actually the experimental findings are and see how far we get with the Drude model. And we will show that the Drude model fails to describe the specific heat. And then we'll end this lecture with a question what we need to do and how it can be that the specific heat is the way it is. So when we talk about the specific heat, we look at the amount of heat in terms of energy that you have to apply to your material in order to change the temperature. So the specific heat is dq dt. And if we make a plot of the specific heat as a function of temperature going from zero to something small, something of the order of 10 Kelvin, then in a metal we will find that this is a straight line. So the specific heat at t equal to zero is zero for the normal metals that we encounter. Now we can measure the specific heat or calculate the specific heat um, in two different ways either at constant pressure or at constant volume. At constant pressure, the sample becomes larger when you heat or smaller when you cool, at least most samples, and thereby it does some work. So the amount of heat that you give into your sample is partly going away by the energy that is concerned into the work that your sample does. So let's have a look at the specific heat at constant volume. And at constant volume, we can basically say that the amount of heat that you have to apply to change the temperature is equal to the internal energy of our sample as a change of temperature, so dE dt. So let's have a look at the results that we expect in the Drude model. And in the Drude model, we know that our energy is given by the kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is p squared over 2m. And we're talking here about the kinetic energy per electron, so we express the specific heat per electron. Well, if you have an atom where each electron provide, of each atom provides one free electron, then it's per atom, and then you know the volume per atom or the mass per atom. So you can also express this as per volume or per mass unit. But in the Rude model, we said that the impulse or the momentum or the kinetic energy is given by three half K Boltzmann T of the electrons at a point where they last scattered. And we talk here about the sample at homogeneous temperature. So our internal energy is 3 half kBT per electron. Well, the specific heat is the derivative of the internal energy with temperature is 3 half K Boltzmann, a constant. And if you take an ideal gas, something like helium, then indeed this is what you measure for a helium gas. So, or for an ideal gas. So, that sounds reasonable. That's also sound something that you observe in other ideal gases, which we assumed the electron gas to be. And that assumption can't be completely wrong, because we get several properties right. But not a specific heat, because the specific heat goes to zero. So let's discuss why is this weird. And note that I'm not saying that the theory is weird. The theory, this is statistical mechanics, there's not much you can do wrong in this sense. Um, but the experiment is weird, that your specific heat goes to zero. 
And for that we can see if we can calculate a specific heat and show what it means when the specific heat of a certain material at a certain temperature is zero. And we can use Boltzmann statistics in order to calculate the specific heat. Just very general. We have n different microstates. Classically, a microstate is given by the momentum and position of all particles in our ensemble, quantum mechanically by the wave function of the system. And I assume here that n is quantized, and of course we take in the end the limit of n to infinite, such that we have an infinite number of states and can work with continuous. But when it's quantized, I can nicely write out sums, but we have in the end to take the limit to infinite. So I have n states and I label them with i going from 1 to n. And ei is the energy of state i. And I'm going to take my states ordered, ei is smaller or equal than ej for all i smaller than j. Furthermore, the zero of energy is not important, so I can always say that E1 is zero. Now, in order to calculate what the occupation of each state is, as a function of time, that might vary, and then the time averaged is, give, is, a, is giving you your statistics, and we can calculate the partition function for that, And the partition function is just a normalization such that the probabilities become one in the end, sum over all states, e to the minus ei divided by k Boltzmann t. And the time average occupation of state i is then given by pi is 1 over z e to the minus ei divided by k Boltzmann t, such that that's the probability if you do not normalize and then or the ratio between the states and then 1 over z is the normalization that the sum over all probabilities is 1. We can calculate the total energy it is the sum over all microstates the probability to find your system in that microstate averaged over all times and then the energy of that microstate. And we can do this actually classically or quantum mechanically we have exactly the same equations in both cases. Classically it is the position and the momenta of your electrons. Quantum mechanically these are the different wave functions. And then we can calculate the specific heat just as the, the derivative of the total energy to temperature. So the statement is that for a free kinetic gas, an ideal gas, this becomes a constant. Total energy is linear in temperature. Whereas for the experimental observation for a metal is that the specific heat goes to zero. So let's have a look at two different cases. In the first case, I'm going to take a system where I look at my energies and I have a set of states with a gap. So this is state 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. And there is a gap. And I'm going to take the limit where my temperature is small compared to the gap. 
So I'm going to take the limit where k Boltzmann t is much smaller than e2. In that limit we find that p1 is 1, pi is 0 for all i larger than 1. Your total energy is the energy of the first state. And then if we take the derivative with respect to temperature, you'll find that Cv is zero. You can easily calculate it through if you just take a two-level system. Um, if you want to do the true limits and sums for an infinite level system, you have to be more than a little bit careful on how to take the limits and series expansions. But that this comes out, you can reasonably well see the occupation goes exponentially to zero. So we can always find a range where the occupation of the first excited state is exponentially small, independent on small fluctuations on the temperature. And therefore you can always neglect it to first order and your CV is going to be zero. Now let's have a look at the second case. So there is no problem with a zero specific heat. We just the statement is, it's weird for a metal. Let's have a look at case two. Okay, Boltzmann T is gonna be roughly equal to EI minus E1. So I have an excited state. I'm not sure if there's a gap, I haven't said anything about that. But I'm gonna put in a temperature which is roughly equal to that energy. And I furthermore require that I have more states where EI plus minus one minus EI is small compared to K Boltzmann T or roughly equal is also allowed. So I must have a state I minus one and a state I plus one their energy separation is larger than zero and smaller compared to the temperature. Now we can calculate the change in occupation of Pi plus one. And when we reduce the temperature, this state is gonna reduce in occupation. So Pi plus one reduces. When T reduces, and Pi minus one increases when T reduces. So when you cool down, you start to populate more and more the lower energy states. If you do this, you'll find that the energy increases when T increases. Or in other words, dE over dt is larger than zero. Now, which case do we have when we have a metal? And based on the specific heat, you could say we must have case one because there the specific heat goes to zero. If we have excited states within the range of our temperature, that means that your specific heat must have a positive value. But, a metal has a conductance. So when I put on an electrical field, I'm allowed to make excitations and one electron can gain some momentum. Well, if an electron gains some momentum, that means I must have an excited state. And I can make this excitation with small electric fields and in Ohm's law with infinitesimal small electrical fields. And indeed, even at very low temperatures with very small um, electrical fields, you still have a conductance. So we need to have states at excitation energies that are infinitesimally small. So we should have a flurry of states at very low energy. But then, when my temperature gets to that very low energy, I should have a positive specific heat. But we measure that the specific heat goes to zero. Well, a zero specific heat for an insulator would be okay. Then at some low temperature, you just condense in the ground state. And you cannot make excitations, which is true. 
But in a metal, I can always make excitations. And with an electrical field, I can start a conductance and I can make that electrical field any size and I always have conductance. So I should have infinitely many excited states in a very small temperature range. Nonetheless, the specific heat goes to zero. That's a puzzle that took many, many years to solve. And actually only with the introduction of quantum mechanics, people were able to solve this. And that is the next model or extension of the Sommerfeld model that we're gonna talk about next week, namely the Sommerfeld model, where we will include quantum mechanics. And then we will be able to understand why the specific heat goes to zero in metals. Um, in all cases, the specific heat is a very powerful method to get information about the number of states that you have at the energy where you measure the specific heat. So how many states do I have with an excitation energy that is equal to the temperature? That's something that a specific heat tells you about and you can learn about. So it's very often very useful to look at the specific heat as one of the first measurements for a material that you want to understand to see what goes on and what the statistics is and the possible states that we have. Yes, so we have seen that we can explain a lot with the Drude model, but not everything. And the specific heat is of course a very nice example where things go wrong because also it's importance. Um, but we've also seen that for the Hall effect, um, we can explain many materials. We get very good results for the alkalides. But for aluminum, something strange went on. There we found that we have effective positively charged charge carriers in our system or a negative charge density, which would be equally weird. Um, next week, we'll introduce uh, the Sommerfeld model and the really strange part for the people at that time is that that didn't solve the problem. Aluminum still has the same hole coefficient in the Sommerfeld model as it has in the Drude model. One reason to start with the Drude model is that many of the results are just one-to-one -one equally valid in the Sommerfeld model. Um, and only that was solved later when Bloch started to look at the effect of a periodic lattice on your sample and then people could understand what the positive and negatively charged charge carriers in a solid are. We'll see each other uh, in the next video. Stay healthy.